Innovation Festival here in London, in-flight entertainment and connectivity is one of the tracks that we're all discussing. Uh, we just came out of a presentation with this lovely gentleman, Ron Chapman, who is the president or CEO? A bit of both. A bit of both, of ASIP Tech. And they've been developing uh, a connectivity solution for single aisle uh, aircraft, low cost carrier solution using low orbit, low earth orbit satellites and Bluetooth for connectivity. Correct. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So basically a decade in development and uh, we came up with a concept after the collapse of all the major Wi-Fi programs back in 06, 07 when they shut down Boeing Connection, we thought, well, they're all going to come back to life again. So being a small company, we decided to go on a different path and go on the Bluetooth path rather than Wi-Fi. The low earth satellites were already there, but they're a bit slow. But we realized that over a period of time, that if we could integrate Bluetooth to a low earth orbit satellite and control the packet data on board both the aircraft and through the network, then we could develop a really low cost solution. Okay, and you've been really good at sort of um, simplifying the technology behind this so that people can understand it. So can, can you put it in a nutshell how the solution works and what sort of hardware, what sort of installation, what sort of certification are we looking at uh, for, for the aircraft? Yeah, well, I, I call it Bob and Leo because uh, it's just something to try and familiarize it, but it's Bluetooth on board. It's based on the latest uh, generation Bluetooth 5. Uh, pioneered by the Bluetooth SIG group back in 2010. Uh, it, it basically is the same technology that's embedded in your digital watches. So um, it's long range, it's fast, you can connect hundreds of devices to it. And what it means is that you're then able to control using the latest app technology what people see and do. When you then link it up to a narrowband low earth orbit satellite, then you've got a very low system cost structure. You've got a router, just a single Bluetooth router on board that will connect every passenger on board with basic texting. So we're not an internet connection, we're not a Wi-Fi connection, we're Bluetooth, the same as the texting we do on our Apple Watch. So we're able to do SMS, WhatsApp, email type texting, and then also embedded is a piece of software that embeds into the app for a booking platform. So you can book tours, attractions, you can buy retail on board. So once you combine that with the new generation Iridium Next satellites, then you end up with a very small footprint system. And it also enables you to do some things that really hasn't been possible up to now. And that is put an antenna in the window. So we basically put one antenna on the right hand side of the aircraft, another antenna on the left hand side of the aircraft, then wire it up to one access point in the aircraft and you end up with a system that's basically $25,000 complete installed and takes about five man hours to install. So simple installation. The access point then connects everyone on board the aircraft and no different to your watch. You don't need to pair it. You don't need to log on. It automatically detects when you're there. And what we're trying to do is we embed the software into an airline's existing app. Virtually all airlines in the world now are moving to apps and booking apps. We're doing our boarding pass via the app. So we realise that if we can embed these two modules, the messaging module and the booking module into their app, that will drive more app downloads. That means more people will be connected to the airline. It will extend their digital reach. And from that perspective then, as more and more people download the app, it means they're more and more connected to the airline. So a lot of people are talking about streaming, video, bandwidth, bandwidth, bandwidth. This is obviously a lower bandwidth solution, but there's still a big market for this. We've still got a lot of dark flights, a lot of regional carriers that have nothing at all. So how big do you think uh, the market is for the solution? Well, I think as we all know, the market's sort of segregated into two areas. You've got the large legacy national flag carrier type airlines that need to have Wi-Fi. I mean, Wi-Fi is important. I was part of the original um, founding group to develop Wi-Fi and aircraft. And Wi-Fi is important for the business traveller, the, the, the person that's travelling on behalf of their company and they need to stay connected, they need their outlook. Uh, but as soon as you talk about video streaming, the, the cost of Wi-Fi goes through the roof. So we see it coming down to developing a solution for low-cost airlines, which is the type of thing people are doing when they're standing at the boarding gate. They're sitting there tapping on their phones, they're sending messages, they're keeping in touch with their family and friends. I mean, we've commissioned over 70 business jets to date, and everything from Boeings down to uh, small jets. And what we find the pilots and the executives in the back doing, they're just keeping in contact. 
They're not streaming content. They're not uh, surfing the web. They're just communicating with their family and friends or they're organising their, their rental car, etc. So in the low-cost world, you're talking about... I mean, all, most research shows that between 6 and 10% of people are prepared to pay for Wi-Fi. That's a reasonably good business model when you look at the revenue that a go-go is starting to generate now. But it's the other 94% that are not going to pay. And that's due that on the ground, we've got a social mindset that connectivity is free. That's what made WhatsApp what it is to date. And so for the people in the back, there's not really a solution. So if you come up with something that's free, that they can use when they're on board, and how we make it free is that every message sent has an embedded sponsor in it. So it's delivered by, I'm sure you've seen that on your phone, we've got delivered by or an Apple promo. We do the same. That underwrites the cost of the message. So we end up with a message cost that's about six one hundredths of a cent to compress it and get it off the aircraft and deliver it. And then we're able to generate a little bit more than that in terms of a sponsor. And that's how we're able to provide every passenger on board with free messaging. And that's how we're able to connect every passenger on board with free messaging because we're not consuming bandwidth. The minute you consume bandwidth, it means you need broadband. You need broadband, you need everything that goes with it. So it's a combination of developing a solution for the leisure traveller, I suppose is the best way to put it, particularly on the low cost airlines where you've got 12,000 aircraft flying around, narrow body, and a very big growth path, another 16,000 coming and a system that you can install simply where you're not tearing the air part apart, you can install it overnight, and a solution that helps extend the airline's digital reach. Okay, and then last but not least, um, you did mention a time frame for potentially having this installed on commercial aircraft. Yeah, so we've been testing on everything from an A380 down to a 737 over the last 18 months. We're now at a stage where we've got the ground infrastructure, everything to where we want it and the technology to where we want it. So we're, we're, we're looking to, to commission our first commercial aircraft in the next quarter. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Ron. My pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Marianne. And watch this space. Uh, Leo Bluetooth connectivity coming to a low-cost carrier near you. Uh, for Apex Media, I'm Marianne Simpson at Aviation Festival. Thank <laughs> you.